Welcome, friends. This is uh, Dr. Jaitley, your cardiologist uh, from New York, uh, on your favorite source, Muni Meter Health, where we talk about uh, uh, health health awareness, primarily cardiac uh, awareness, and of course about uh, the latest trends in cardiology. So, welcome again, residents, fellows, and my dear students, and of course my colleagues on Muni Meter Health. Uh, just uh, remember uh, some uh, some high housekeeping rules I always put aside. This is purely an educational source. It's not a medical advice, okay? And if you're having an emergency, please contact your doctor and get to the hospital right away. So tre what's trending new in cardiology? This is the subject of the present uh, today's uh, video. Well, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about very briefly on this is perivascular fat attenuation index. Now, this is emerging as a very, very important non-invasive biomarker, if you will, because up until now, we have stress tests. We know that. It's called the cardiovascular stress test. We have the echoes, which are non-invasive. We even have a CTA in the past uh, 15 to 20 years and we are able to quantify the calcium scores in these patients we are able to identify the coronary stenosis or coronary disease etc however what we have not been able to identify is what is the risk factor for sudden cardiac death or even a myocardial infarction that occurs unannounced many times you'll be surprised that and of course you you know, we know that in the cardiology world, we are not surprised at all because half of the, almost 50% of your MIs are occurring in the not so significant coronary artery disease. So which have only minor, for instance, minor atherosclerotic plaque burden. If you were to look at the plaques, these patients who were identified on, on say, who went for CTA, uh, you know, uh, computer tomography uh, for coronary artery disease, the atherosclerotic plaque burden was minor in those patients and these patients were having MIs or they were even having sudden cardiac deaths. So one of the one of the hugest burdens in amongst cardiologists even today, we are talking about 2018, is we cannot identify yet patients with sudden cardiac death and that is the biggest challenge in cardiology and likewise we cannot identify patients who will have their first MIs. Yet even though we know the cardiovascular risk factors, uh, we've looked at the you know, the Framingham trials and Framingham uh, scores, etc., including hypertension, cholesterol, HDL, LDL, diabetes, history of smoking, family history, all those cardiovascular risk factors independently have not predicted w alone which patients will have their first MI or certain cardiac death. So what is emerging now is uh, the burden in cardiology has been how do we identify those vulnerable plaques? And this is what we are talking about. So here, we have the heart. Here's my favorite schematic I always draw. And here's the aortic uh, offshoot that's coming off. And I'm showing the trileaflet aortic valve. And uh, assuming that this is your left and this divides into two, obviously one becomes the LAD here and this goes into to become a circ. Now, what I'm drawing is basically um, the coronary tree here, if you will. And this is your right coronary following the right coronary, um, uh, the right uh, heart border, if you will. So we have an RCA, we have the LAD, and we have the left circ here, okay? These are the three major arteries, obviously, and I'm sure you've heard of, uh, you know, how uh, how people go for triple bypasses, specifically for the sake of the students, so this way I can make it very simple for them as well. So the plaques normally start falling. We use a different color here. The coronary stenosis may occur in any of these um, areas. So the study which was done primarily to ascertain whether perivascular fat attenuation index can be a marker, a biomarker, which could be non-invasively assessed by a CTA, a routine CTA in some patients, was primarily conducted uh, in Europe and then, of course, in the U.S. And um, in the U.S., it was primarily from the Cleveland Clinic Group, and in Europe, it was in Germany as well as in University of Oxford. So Oxford and then it was in Germany. Now, uh, roughly about 4,000 patients. The N, the N value was about 4,000 patients, and that's a pretty substantial amount. And these patients underwent the CTA. Now, what they determined was, when they looked at these proximal arteries, only the RCA, the proximal, the proximal LAD, and the proximal CERC, they found that there was an attenuation of fat around the perivascular a region of that particular vessel if there was a coronary inflammation present. 
How did they determine that? Look at this. Now here is an artery. We'll, we'll show you right. Uh, we are using this color, but that's all right. And um, now the plaque starts to form here, for instance, and goes in here in this region like that. Okay. Similarly, a plaque will form internally like this and go in like this. Now, if you had a very insignificant, because this is a very insignificant uh, coronary artery stenosis, and this seems to be a very significant coronary stenosis. So this is very, very significant coronary stenosis. We know we can attack that by, you know, by uh, current intense measures, but these are the ones which are being ignored. So if patients were walking around, quote unquote, with less significant or uh, less significant coronary stenosis, and they were not flagged, yet these patients had enough inflammation going on here. So there was a lot of inflammation going on here. These are at high risk for sudden cardiac death and myocardial infarction. So you could identify these patients based on based on determining the fat attenuation index here. Now, what was, so the studies were validated. Now, they, they are validated uh, uh, because everything needs a validation. You can't say, well, okay, I have a high blood pressure, and then you don't validate the blood pressure. So you have to validate what's the normal blood pressure first, 120 over 80. And then when you say 150 over 90, that's a validation and say, look, that's a hypertension. Similarly, PFAI, they found that minus 70. Now, again, uh, not to boggle you with all these uh, terminologies, but the fact is that these are the minus 70 was the cutoff. If the cutoff was uh, higher than minus 70 Honsfeld units, it's uh, spelled as Honsfeld, H-U, these are the radiological terms. Again, I'm not going to get into that because that's beyond the scope of the video here of the presentation. But the whole idea is that anything beyond minus 70 was considered a high risk for sudden cardiac death and myocardial infarction because that determined there was a perivascular attenuation that was occurring. So this is where the attenuation occurs. So PAFI in this region where the coronary stenosis is very minimal and insignificant, but the inflammation is very high. So in other words, it was inversely proportional to the coronary inflammation that was existing within the vascular system. So the coronary inflammation is inversely proportional to the, to the PFI. So that means higher the PFI, lesser is the, um, higher the PFI, more is the sorry more is the coronary inflammation obviously so they were directly proportional to the coronary inflammation actually so coronary inflammation and pfi correlated well however if there was an attenuation that was occurring and we found that there was no fat here for instance so no so lack of fat rather so lack of fat was inversely proportional to the coronary inflammation lack of fat but the uh, but the fat attenuation index was high and that correlated directly with the coronary inflammation. So here we go. Coronary inflammation directly proportional to the uh, PFI value, and but coronary inflammation inversely proportional to the uh, lack of uh, uh, lack of uh, adipogenesis, if you will. So we can call it lack of adipogenesis because if there's a lack of fat here, that means there is more inflammation going on here. Here you have huge plaque, but there's no inflammation, and you could have. Uh, a lot of perivascular fat here as well. So these are patients who have la large perivascular fats and they may, they may have significant stenosis but no inflammation so they are not at risk for sudden cardiac death and myocardial infarction but still you have to intensify the therapy. So what follows through these studies in Oxford and uh, Germany and of course the co counterparts in, uh, at Cleveland Cl uh, Clinic in the US was clearly there were two implications. The first implication was to identify primarily and prevent these patients from having sudden cardiac death and myocardial infarctions if they went for routine CTA. If they went for routine CTA, one could identify and actually offer a primary prevention uh, in these individuals by intensifying and deploying all the possible measures to uh, reduce their cardiovascular risk factors and follow them very, very closely. So that may be one of the implications based on this study. The second implication is patients who have already suffered a coronary event. Say somebody has had an unstable angina or has had a stent place for a myocardial infarction. Those patients can routinely have a CTA. It could be an implication on further studies. We don't know yet. We're not recommending that yet. But the fact is that the CTA may be very useful and not only just useful based on identifying the coronary scores, but actually identifying the 
PFI here. That's the PFI. So you need to know what is perivascular fat attenuation index based from a CTA. So non-invasively, it is very interesting to see how one can identify so-called vulnerable plaques because vulnerable plaques are the ones which are the culprit plaques, I call them. And these are the vulnerable plaques. And we to date, we have very few uh, studies really um, identifying them because that's always been a hugest burden amongst cardiologists to identify the vulnerable plaques. It's the And these are the plaques which are unstable. Remember, these are the patients who will actually plaque off, have a rupture, so they can rupture, these plaques can rupture within the artery and therefore can cause uh, thrombosis. So once they rupture, this is where the thrombosis will occur and as a result, the flow will be diminished. So coronary flow can be abruptly stopped or can come to a standstill and therefore lead to sudden cardiac death and myocardial infarctions in these patients who have these plaques. Now just, just a caveat here, it was the right coronary artery, just so that you know, and the LAD which correlated the best. The left circ did not correlate much. So left circ was not correlated yet to identify the PFI. But RCA and LAD really, uh, especially the proximal parts, this is the area which was, uh, which was really shown, shown to have the perivascular fat attenuation index correlatable with the inflammation. So more the fat attenuation, more is the inflammation present. That means less fat present here. Attenuation is occurring less fat here. That'll signify and no inflammation. But if, it is, if, you, have, if you have fat attenuation here in this region, you will have uh, coronary inflammation to the max. And these are the patients who have unstable plaques. Okay, so having understood this very briefly, just idea was to sort of, uh, again, we want to give uh, credit to obviously these studies because, and the study that was uh, listed as was CRISP, um, uh, CT. It was the CRISP uh, uh, CT, CT, Cardiovascular Risk Assessment by uh, CT, uh, which was published in Lancet in uh, 2018 this year. Okay, so one can uh, review for further details and go back and look at these studies again. Okay, I thank you for your attention. Once again, join us on Munimeter Health for cutting edge cardiology and we'll have more newer trends uh, which will be summarized before the end of the year here. And we're wanting to try and see how best we can really offer in a short video, the presentation about uh, uh, cardiology and uh, the, the newer trends that we are looking at. Thanks again and looking forward to seeing you again on my next uh, video. Bye now.